Hello my family, I greet you. Welcome to another one here on Truth and Love the Church with your brother Joseph. Our page was hacked, but it's now back. So please do well to click the notification bell if you are subscribed. I actually noticed that, uh, you know, some people were being unsubscribed. You know, there's actually something wrong. I, I believe maybe it's a bug or anything when it comes to this system. So please make sure that you are subscribed. If you have been unsubscribed, please do subscribe, okay? All right. So we're going to be witnessing the greatest miracle of all miracles, and that is the born again experience. So I just want you to hear as Prophet Angel narrates how you got born again and is how he leads people to Christ. So like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I'll meet you in the next one as always. God bless you. So this is what a great intellectual and man of God of great stature, Vod Beckham says, says you have to have a problem called the manuscript conspiracy, which is in three levels. Number one, anyone who wants to change the Bible, if it is true that the Bible was changed, is zero probability. Why? Because you have to have a group of people who are willing to steal 6,000 manuscripts with portions of the scriptures from every location that this way and go home and change it with no computer. No photocopying because there was no photocopy. You have to have scribes ready and thieves ready. Steal all 6,000 copies. Make sure they don't wake up before you change them. So you have to know where every manuscript is and run to that location, send the thief there and every thief has to succeed. And bring to one location and you change them and then replace these manuscripts you stole without nobody knowing you. You stole them and they are already changed. Remember, this is not computer. You have to write the ink, delete. With no delete button. Maybe people don't know this. When you would write a manuscript, you can't make a mistake. You make a mistake, you start over. So there were people who were ready to do so. Now you can't go there and underline and delete and write on top that we should say Jesus is the son of God. You can't. Then after that, you have another problem. As population was increasing, the biggest problem of having different nationalities here, he is white, Chinese, uh, from Zaka, you, you, know, you understand what I'm talking about? The problem of the population increase and people being in different locations is they will speak different languages. And immediately those 6,000 manuscripts would have been changed into Syriac, Coptic, and Latin, three languages, main languages. So you have to steal the 6,000 manuscripts and then send the thieves to steal the Syriac, the Coptic, and the Latin manuscripts that copied the. Then you have another problem. In those days, the church fathers would write commentaries, and it is said by, by luminaries in theology and apologetics that what you would have with the church fathers, they have a, they had a certain rule or rather uh, culture of commending on a script or a manuscript and they say if we only have the commentaries that the church fathers wrote way back years ago if we only had that we would reproduce 95 percent of the new testament with simply their commentary so you have to steal the six thousand steal the syriac the coptic and the latin manuscript and then steal every commentary done then you would pass and he says it this way if you believe that, help you. And I say it this way. If you believe it, you are done ahead. <laughs> Psalm 22, verse number one. Quickly because of time. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Those were the words of Jesus written in the book of Psalm by somebody who had never witnessed the crucifixion because it had never been invented in his prophesying. But there is a man who will say these words. For hundreds and thousands of years, nobody came to say these words. Only Jesus came and said these words. Why art thou so far from helping me from, from the words of my roaring? Mm. 
Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not. And in the night season, and you're, not, and you're silent. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabits the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in thee. They trusted in thou. This deliver them. Mm. They cried unto thee and were delivered. They trusted in thee and were not confounded. But I'm a worm. And no man, a reproach of men, despised of the people. Mm. And they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the leaf. They shake the head and say, He trusted on the Lord that you would deliver him. Let him deliver him. Is this not what the soldier said? The book of Psalms is prophesying the crucifixion. When there was no crucifixion on earth, nobody had invented it. I'm not trying to get into the spiritual side of it. But Jesus fulfilled over 800 prophecies. And if you're a prophet like me, you would actually put it to over 1,200 prophecies. Do you know what it would take to fulfill only five prophecies? It would be near impossible. Jesus went to over 1,000. If I write a letter right now and it's called Chiposi, right? His first name, I would put maybe his great, great, great Angus name. Or, or, I, or let me just say Chiposi. The moment the letter says Chiposi, they Male men will look at it and say, Chipo. And another one is called Chipo. He says, no, but this one can't go to Chipo's address because this one is called Chipos. Then the address will be the same road. Then the numbers will change. So it looks like it's going to the same person. Then it changes. Then it changes. Then it changes. It touches Jesus. Then we know for sure we have selected the right one. For Jesus to fulfill just five, it is impossible. He fulfilled over 1,000. It's impossible. I want you to understand. If I'm looking for a road and I'm walking on one road, are you hearing me? This is my last word for this part one. This is my road. I'm going somewhere. I go here and then the road turns to four roads from one. How do I know where to go? And I find people standing there. One person is dead. Should I ask him? Should I go that, that route where there is a dead guy? Another road is dead. Another man is dead. I find one guy standing here is alive. Where do I go? Jesus is alive. Mohammed is dead. Buddha is dead. Let's all stand up. Jesus is alive! Yeah. One time they are watching him come like that. And the man says, there is Jesus. We left him on the side of the... of the river, just over there. Did he tell you how he was coming here? They say, ah! He never said anything. But, but is it not him? They see him walking on the water. If you knew that was over 10 kilometers in the middle of the Sea of Galilee, if you go there, you'll be enjoying it. Over 10 kilometers, Jesus walking. <laughs> forget, the, forget the issue of walking on water. What about hippopotamus? What about crocodile? What about shark day? It might be a shark day. <laughs> I was at the Good News City there. I said, this thing here, we need to increase this. Uh, what's the name? This dam here. And they said, oh, yeah, let me see if it's deep. I said, no, 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 don't get in there. They said, there is no crocodile. I said, did you sleep here last night? <laughs> what about the night before? What if a crocodile walked into? <laughs> Jesus is walking towards them on top of the water. What happened to viscosity? What happened to the molecular density of water? What happened to physics? The reality is, you can choose to believe Jesus today. I don't know if there is anyone here who has not received Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. See, there's a big difference in saying I was born a Christian and somebody saying, you know what? With what I've had today, I realized something was completely different to how I believed. 
And you don't need to be an intellectual. Maybe today is your conviction. You, you were just w w walking around as a Christian. You, it was an in thing. Are you hearing? Or maybe this is the first time anyone has ever told you to be born again. Because you see, I was born in the, in the Dutch Reformed Church. There was nothing called born again. I was a Christian. Could even hear from God small, small. Until my brother, Dr. Benjamin, said to me, let's go to my meeting, to my church. And I went with him, family of God and apostle, Andrew Taunashe, prophet Andrew Taunashe, was preaching there. And I looked at these people. I thought they were too lost. They were praying to God as if they owned him. You know when someone speaks in tongues and go like, La Rota. I say, hey, he's good. He's good sweet like this. I couldn't understand. They acted like God was their friend in their pocket. I said, these people are lost, man. I was looking at them as they prayed, as they prayed. I said, born again? I've been a Christian for a long time. What born again are they talking about? Then I realized the concept of it. Before my brother pushed me to the front, he's looking for me. I'm already there crying. And I assure you, if my father was watching by way of television, hmm, if he was Nigerian, he would suck this teeth. That hissing sound would have come out fast. Like, what do you want to be born again? For what purpose? You are a Christian already. Is there anyone here? You just lift your hand if you want to be born again. The right way. There is one. There is one right there. Mm. Raise it up high. Let me see it. Another one up there. Another one. Down there. Another one here. Are you see another one right there? Clap hands for this that are another one is over there. Another one is over there. Over there. Over there. I think he is already showing them here. Where is another one? You see? Another one is over there. Raise your hand, my brother. Lift it up here. There's another one here. Another one there. Another one there. Another one there. This is the reality of Christianity. These people are coming to the knowledge of Christ. Another one over there. Another one here. They are here. All over this place here. Do you see that? If you can't see, you can't see. Over there. This is a group of people here. I can't see them. Oh, yeah, there. There is over there as well. Our brilliant people over there. Another team of the. As a matter of fact, if your hand is raised, follow me here. Follow me up here. Follow me. Remove that. Come here and stand here. All of you stand with me. Just put it up there. Up there. Up there. Come here, please. Come towards me. Face me. Don't face them. This is not drama. This is you facing me. Please. All those with their hands raised, I want to talk to you. It's brilliant to see so many people understanding that there is a Jesus. Jesus, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want you to show all of them here. Mazevelore cano seve. Are you, listen to me. 
There is always a concept of when we say you are born again. To other, in other areas, it doesn't mean nothing. So the changes, you never see them. But when you come to a living God, there should be proof of what he says. What we believe in spirit embers is very different. We believe God will prove himself. There is no, this is no, there is no kululu, no kalala. No, nothing behind the scenes. The Bible says it this way. Whosoever is born of God overcomes the world. That's number one. Number two, hear me well and hear me good. It says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. He is. The word new there is the word kahinos. Are you listening to me, guys? Is the word kahinos. And I understand there are those watching from around the world. Are, you know, it says, he is a new creature. The word new creature there, the word new is kahinos. It means another type of being that never existed before. You can still look in the mirror and see the same person you saw last night. But God is not seeing the same person. And I know you think it's about some spiritual thing. Brilliant stuff. The whole service today I was talking about how it is evidential. You can look at it and see this is it. Christianity is like science. You can prove it. And hear me well. Hear me well. Many people say, okay. Those around the world. Many people say, prove it. How can you, can you prove Jesus scientifically? We have. But hear me, hear me. For science to be real, it has to be number one, observable. Mm -hmm. You can test it, number two. And number three, it is repeatable. That means you can repeat the process. You observe the process. So there is no way you can prove Muhammad. He doesn't exist. He died. So there is no way to prove him. So for science to prove his existence, it's not possible. Why? Because science is proven in three steps. And the first step of science is you have to observe the process. How do we observe the process of someone who is dead? Jesus is alive. We can observe the process. From right this moment, you will see life becomes easy. Not in the easy way you think. The Bible says, my peace I give unto you, but not as the world gives it. So there is a response of this thing. You find yourself just saying, I need to forgive these people. I need to leave these things alone. Leave that one alone. Leave this one alone. Leave this. It doesn't mean to say you are not going to have the experiences and some, some repeats. Because remember, this is your house. But inside that house, there is a new tenant now. As we call them, a new lodger. <laughs> there is now a new one. So that new one, once in a while, will test the residue of the previous neighbor, previous occupant rather. So you start thinking maybe you've gone back to your old self. No, it's just that house is used to an old person, an old tenant. So now the new tenant has to navigate the sofa, maybe it's placed the wrong direction or the wrong side and the TV is in the wrong angle and it is used to the old but when we come to church, we are changing the plugs and setting up the TV in the way you want it and you like it. We are putting it the right direction. So coming to church is fixing the old house for the new tenant. Now the problem is, you as the new tenant, you have to understand, just because the house has holes, it doesn't mean to say you have holes. If it's raining, you don't talk to the owner. You say that the house needs to be fixed, not the owner. So it's the house that can get sick, but the new tenant can repay itself, can repay the house. Raise your hands wherever you are. Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare right this minute that as I agree with my brothers and sisters here, agree with what you said should be agreed upon. They will be transformed, changed from what they are to heavenly beings in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Repeat after me. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in my heart that he died for me, that he rose for me. I confess with my mouth that he is my Lord. He has taken residence in my heart 
And because of that, I believe he is Lord. I speak with my mouth that he is my Lord and Savior. And you said, if I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that he is Lord, I am born again. Right this minute, with my heart, I have believed. With my mouth, I have confessed it. I have agreed with you that Jesus is Lord. I am now born again. In Jesus' mighty name. I want you to remain here for a few minutes. And my wife is going to meet you in another location. Just up there. Do we have a person who can go there and raise their hand? And by the way, my wife is so beautiful, you will not miss. Even if I don't tell you who is my wife, you will just know. Are you getting this? <laughs> so, my wife will be... You see where, the, where that waving of your hand is? Just follow that, follow, follow, follow that pastor there. That's our main pastor. And from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, he will be meeting you guys. If you have problems, he wants to hear of it. And things are going to be fixed. Follow him, we, follow him right now. You're not going home. We are with you, all right? And we're going to have some dinner with you here. We eat chicken and chips and stuff, things like that. So that we show you you are our family. Just follow. Don't worry. No, you are okay. You are right. You are in safe hands. My wife will meet you there and give you some important information. And those who are getting born again around the world by way of television, you know there is a way you can actually get the information. And our numbers are on your screens and they're coming on your screens just in a few minutes, in a few seconds. Take that number, call and somebody will answer you and lead you the right way. 